The Soybean School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, and High Stick NT. Hi, Bernard Tobin here with RealAgriculture.com. We're down at the Simcoe Research Station just down here in southwestern Ontario. We're joined by Jason DeVoe, who's the Application Technology, Technology Specialist. Specialist. That's yep. always a great yep. handle. Thank you. Good to um, see you. We're going to talk a little bit about spraying and nozzles today. Oh, and, good. Uh, you say you're, you're five years on the horticultural side, and now you're going to cross... I'm, I'm starting to feel out field crops and it's a lot tougher than I thought. Give me apple trees any day. So you did some research last year on twin fan nozzles. The big question is, you know, what are the right nozzles, especially when you're trying to hit um, a vertical target, you know, specifically in a, for example, in a soybean crop. Now, let, we've got, we shot this last year and we're going to talk about the results right now, but Let's take us through the research, the trial, what you're trying to achieve. Sure, sure. Well, we get lots of telephone calls all the time. Which twin fan nozzle should I buy? And it seemed like an innocent question. There's 15 or more out there here in Ontario that growers are, are trying out. And we thought, innocently, let's do a spray and pray day where we set targets up in soybean and we'll run 15 of these tips against each other just to see how they perform. Uh, and if I had known now what I know then, I think I would have done it very differently. But we did it. We spent all day running tip after tip after tip onto water sensitive paper and that's great stuff. If you get anything from this video go buy that. It'll show you where your spray is going. Uh, and we took asymmetricals, twin fans, flat fans, all the, the big contenders and uh, we just sprayed. So let's talk a little bit about the results. Um, not exactly what you were <laughs> expecting um, but I really told you a story. I've never had such difficulty looking at data before. I couldn't find a trend, I couldn't find a pattern. I think the issue was there are so many variables involved with spraying. Wind, droplet size, humidity, uh, the target, the angle of the spray, it just goes on and on, boom height. If I had done a little better job isolating some of those variables maybe I'd have more to say. But I think spraying in the field the way we did, the way a grower would spray, it did show us something. The fact that I couldn't find a trend, which tip truly outperformed another tells me that maybe this isn't where we should be putting most of our focus when we're talking about spraying vertical targets. So Jason, let's talk about, I guess, some of the key takeaways here. And it really builds on what Dr. David Hooker and some other folks who've done a lot of this research in Ontario over the last few years um, have found as well. And I guess the first one um, takeaway was higher volumes improve co coverage. Absolutely, yeah. And that's going to be the case in so many different applications uh, to a point of diminishing return. Higher volumes are gonna mean better coverage, period. Uh, the trick is finding the point where you're throwing so much water at it that it's just not worth all the extra effort. But with the twin fans and the coverage that Tom Wolf and Brian Caldwell saw and uh, David Hooker and Helmut Spicer, absolutely higher volumes do give better coverage, both on vertical targets and on horizontal targets. Now you're also looking for coarser droplets as well, right? That's right. So this is something I had to wrap my head around when you're spraying a fungicide. My go-to place is lots of smaller droplets. But what they found was uh, air-induced, very coarse, extremely coarse droplets did a great job of covering vertical targets. The reason being, because these twin fans or these asymmetricals are firing the spray on an angle, the speed of the tractor wasn't such a factor in deflecting that spray. The big droplets will go in the direction they're fired. So big droplets on an angle, good coverage on a vertical target. Now let's talk about boom height. Keep it low if you can. Yeah, this was one that everyone uh, agreed on right from the get-go. As that boom gets higher and higher, wind plays more of a factor and you start to defeat the fact that you've got the spray on an angle at all. It just gets sort of homogenous before it gets to the crop. So you get that boom down to 50 centimeters, 20 inches above the crop, or whatever the nozzle manufacturer suggests, you've got a lot better chance getting benefit from that angle on your coverage. And speaking of angles, you're looking for angle spray, right? Definitely. So it's, uh, it's simple enough. You just you picture a vertical target. You've got the direction to travel and a fan coming at that target. It sort of paints up one side. And then to switch over as the sprayer passes over, it paints down the far side. If you're going too fast, it'll flatten out that front fan and the back fan will trail straight and you've sort of defeated the whole reason for having it to begin with. Hey, and final point, I mean, speed. 
We're always driving fast, we're driving slow. Ground speed really doesn't have so much of an impact. Well, this is a bit muddier. Some say yes, some say no. Uh, obviously, we want to get the job done, but there's no point in doing it if you're not getting the coverage. So I think I'll tie this back to what I said about water-sensitive paper. It's all of two seconds with a, a clothes pin or a, a spring-back paper clip to put a couple of targets on a wheat head or the tillers and just do a quick pass over and go look for yourself. If you're going so fast that you're not getting the coverage, you might consider slowing down until you get what you're looking for. So, let's sum it up here. You're a nozzle guy. I am. You're saying nozzles really don't matter. No, this hurts. <laughs> I'll get this quoted years later, but I think in this particular case, and I'm only playing on that spray and pray day that I did with uh, a couple of others, those nozzles didn't make a colossal difference, or at least not so much that I could say, that's the one you need to get, not for the nozzles I looked at. I think we need to back up a little bit and look at the context of this. It doesn't matter how good your coverage is if you've missed that window for good fungicide protection. It's not a curative. If that fungicide isn't there, when the disease shows up, it's not going to work. I guess if I have to boil it all down, uh, first and foremost is timing. If your fungicide isn't in place, it doesn't matter how good your coverage is if the disease is already there. It's a protecting product, it has to be there, so timing first and foremost. Uh, higher water volumes all the way around showed better coverage, definitely something to consider. Angled spray absolutely does better coverage on vertical targets. Which nozzle you buy is up to you, and if you want to confirm all the other stuff, driving speed, boom height, which we know lower is better, I would recommend you go out and get some of the water sensitive paper, see the job you're doing. Well, there you go. Thanks, Jason. Uh, nozzle's important, but best practices really, uh, really make it hey, happen. Absolutely. Good stuff. Thanks.